So we were talking, he goes and fights in the military for the Empire, and he's in the trenches, and then he meets um, the gangster character and his crew who are dressed up like um, Imperial officers and uh, calls them on it. And when he calls them on it, um, Woody Harrelson, who plays uh, um, the head of the gang, who's dressed as the captain, calls him out to a lieutenant, says this is a deserter, so then they grab Solo and say, oh, and don't believe anything he says because he figures he's going to probably try to tell him the, that he's just a thug who took an a, 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 a officer. So some fun stuff with that character I like. Um, yeah. I thought that was fun. And then they throw him into the pit with the beast. And, and I, I didn't imagine that it was going to be Chewie. Did you? The, I mean, until uh, the, Chewie came out, did you know? second they said the beast, oh, okay. this is Chewie. We got <laughs> to meet Chewie, like, quick. Right, and for me, this is where the movie kind of really starts. This when Chewie he throw they he gets thrown in with the beast. From there on out, I'm like, this is like a material almost all the way through. From the moment he gets thrown in with Chewie, there's a few hiccups here and there, not too many, but this is like a material. But it's weighted down by the intro and a little bit of the stuff until he gets thrown in. He gets not that. Um, it's it's a little too presumptuous. Uh, he's already you know he's already a soldier and he's just able to wander around and do what he wants. You know when there's a war going on and stuff. But he gets thrown mm. in with Chewie and that's I just love that scene. Chewie comes out. They haven't fed him in three days, so he's gonna eat Han <laughs> and the wrestling. Why not? He's got the teeth for it. So um, I thought that was great. I, I even thought it was fun that he spoke Wookie. It, it was it, it, it just it, see that's a funny moment that is funny for the moment and not just for some forced joke that they're trying to stick in there right well yeah that's that's otherwise how how are they going to be friends if you know han doesn't speak wookie already i mean i i would have liked something kind of to give us an idea of that he spoke wookie or how but it seems like just one of the big languages that everyone learns in the galaxy so you know well yeah, they want they wanted it to be a surprise, right? Yeah. That he just comes well, he actually he actually speaks Wookie. He doesn't just understand it. No, which, right? He speaks it. Well, sorta speaks well, it. He speaks what a pigeon Wookie. Pigeon Wookie. Well, <laughs> it, it, it it was great. He's he, yeah. Chewie's pushing him into the mud, and he's just about submerged in the mud, and then you, you hear this wait wait wait, <laughs> and you see the little subtitle. Like, uh, it's moments like that that are funny that the original three Star Wars movies, four, five, and six, that, that it's the reason why when you laughed, those moments were funny. It's because the moment made it funny. And, and the characters, what they said and did was yeah, it's, part it's, of the moment. It's, it's a, yeah, exactly. It's integrated with the story. It's not just some dumb joke that's A dumb in. joke that's just thrown in, like the de thermal detonator or like everything in The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. um, and a few things in the Force Awakens, but um, but yeah. So uh, he, he once he meets Chewie, that's it. Great movie. Like I mean, there's a few things we can, we'll go through them uh, here. So he he meets Chewie. Chewie. Uh, they they meet up with the the um, uh, Woody Harrelson and uh, his his group they as they're a, they get a nice shower together as they're flying away. Well, they're, they're flying away, and then Woody Harrelson decides to land to pick him up. And then Han and Chewie shower together. <laughs> it was funny. I mean, Chewie pushes his way through. He want, he gets what he wants, right? That's the kind of what you get the sense out of that moment was. I, I was Chewie, fine with Chewie taking a shower with Han. I thought yes. it was funny because Chewie's like, "I want to shower now. I'm not. I don't want to wait." Yeah, he's covered in mud. It's in the hair. Yeah. He's, but but he's, he was beautiful after that. His hair was blowing yeah. in the wind. He was all shampooed. He, he yeah, was they feeling did a, good. They did a good job with, Chew, with Chewie amazing. in this movie. And the guy, the guy that that did, I don't know if he's the same guy from the like Force, Force Awakens, Awakens and and uh, Last Jedi, yeah, but whoever was, I mean. But the costume was great too. Did did, did a good job. The hair and was the costume was great. I think the most beautiful yeah. I've ever seen it. Like it, well, they had a lot of great scenes where he's getting blasted with air. Like they're on the train, they're on the well, ship. He the, the suit know. is in different environments. It's all in the mud for when we first meet him. Yeah. And then it's you know blowing in, in the, the wind on the ship. Yeah. Then it's in the shower. It's all wet. And then he's blowing in the mm -hmm. wind when he's hanging out on the ship while they're flying. So just some great stuff. And then it turns into Firefly. Right? This is where we go into Firefly because uh, he, uh, 
Woody Harrelson recruits Chewie and Han yep. to help them do a Firefly, which is what they did. It's a space western. They rob a train. You all know who fire, what Firefly is. We yeah, but that one specific it. episode, right? They rob right. a train. They rob a hover train, a Firefly. I, I don't know how much you want to get into it, except I, I just want to say that it was fun. It seemed a little unnecessary that they're robbing a train when I would guess everything's transported by ships because everything... Especially something really valuable, valuable and that. very dangerous. Especially dangerous. And something that's like locked on a path that people can intercept yeah. and rob. I mean, In a ship you can change course, right? Yeah. And, and go somewhere else. It's part of the western feel of this movie it has a very it has a very much of a western feel to it robbing a train right the shootout at the end you know stuff like that it feels like a western so i'll give it i'll give it that that was the train and that's what they decided to do and it was fun i mean it, not it spectacular great. but it was fun still yeah. yeah i thought it was pretty nice to look at at least my, my, it didn't make sense but <laughs> right you but know, if you give it the, Star Wars. That that's the, what they decided to do for the transport okay yeah um so what they did with it i thought was fun if that's the way they transport it the one problem i had with that scene was um was the female character who committed suicide it was kind of an unnecessary suicide yeah, just that, to rob some money i mean it wasn't even a like a great sacrifice yeah, for the cause. Yeah, because she doesn't guarantee just like, that anything happened. Well, I'm gonna blow the bridge and I'm on it. Run? Yeah. Try and get off. Do something. So uh, here, here's another thing. Just let the train go by, and then we'll figure something else and come back later. Like, why do you have to sacrifice? Not only that. Check this out. Chewie and and Han uncoupled the car. The back cars went away. Why didn't they just uncouple the front cars so that the center car they could just lift it off? Was it? I think the idea was they had to remove it from the track. Right, so that it would come off. Because it was like a double. Because it was locked. The track was sort of in the middle of this thing. Well, and there were cars on top and the bottom, yeah. right? So, um, it, that's fine. It made well, her sense. Her sacrifice was sort ridiculous. Of. Yeah, she was. If if. Thandy Newton. Definitely underused in this movie. She's, oh. she's so good. The few lines that she has, a few but scenes that she has, got rid of are charismatic, right? Um, yeah. But, right. Uh, <coughs> I, I, I thought that that was dumb. That was one of the dumb parts of the movie. Once once we get... we I'm, I'm, I'm saying this movie really starts for me when we meet Chewie. And then there's a few dumb moments throughout. And her committing suicide was dumb. If they can't... Um, get the get, get her to safety and get the car out in time. Disconnect, S save her, and try something else. I mean, well, yeah, I don't know. She was pinned down by you. You, ha you have to put somebody else at risk that her action saves them. That's why she makes the sacrifice, right? Okay, so uh, after Thandie Newton commits suicide, they pull the the. Uh, the train car up, and of course the uh, marauders are trying to pull it, and um, Woody Harrelson's character tells Han, just to fly into the mountain and they'll let go. And then what? <laughs> then I'm just supposed to hit the mountain or try to maneuver out of the way? He's just like, no, fly straight, they'll let go. And Hans understands and he knows how to pilot the ship, and he's like, I'm not going to have time to turn if I don't. So he releases the cables, Turns away from hitting the mountain, and then they, uh, the bikers also basically, uh, the marauders let go of the thing, and it hits the mountain too. Yeah, now, I don't understand how any of them were going to take that giant train car by themselves. You know, how about just work together, land it somewhere, and split, split, it, split up it up, or something? Yeah. So. After the, the the train scene, this is where we meet basically one of the big antagonists in the movie. Um, uh, we can't remember the actor's name or the character's name. Uh, Go ahead, continue talking. But yeah, so you look it up and, I, and I'll talk. Uh, so he meets with them and he's upset that Woody Harrelson couldn't get the train and car and get the fuel and also couldn't um, uh, di didn't plan ahead for. Uh, the marauders that came and tried to steal it. So he's empty-handed. And uh, that, that's all fine. Um, and basically, uh, Han, Han comes up with an idea to steal some unrefined version of the fuel. 
Um, and uh, they're like, well, how, how is that going to be? How, how are you going to do that? You'd need somewhere to, you know, uh, refine it right away, offload it before it exploded because it'd be really volatile. And Chewie comes in. And this is what I love. Chewie, throughout the whole movie, he's he's engaged with what's going yeah. on. You ready? Yeah. Paul Bettany. Right. What's the character? Dryden name? Voss. <laughs> That's why I can't remember. Dumb name. Dryden. But yeah, so Paul Bettany is the uh, the antagonist, and he he's good for the parts that he's in, which is basically this scene and the scene in the end. Yeah, he's That's, barely in it. Yeah. That's the problem. Is everyone that you think is an antagonist, well, kind of isn't, except him, and he's kind of underpowered and just, you know. Present yeah. in a present. couple of scenes. He's present, yeah. Doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but he has good presence. He, yeah, his acting is good. And it's a different kind. It's not like an outright... It's a subtle threatening thing that they that he did. And I liked it, but just there was nothing backing up the threat, it felt like, to me. Well, cause, Except he had knives. Well, well he know. just sent them on their way there, yeah. Uh, I, 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 th I think he thought that he could fight and that he had a, an ally in Woody Harrelson's character at the end, and that kind of bit him in the ass. Because so, mm -hmm. um, he had sent all of his people away in the end, but we'll get there. Um, so basically, uh, after Chewie comes up with the solution for the new heist plan, um, Paul Bettany says, okay. Let's do that, but don't fail me this time. You know, they're, they're, we're out of options if you do. Uh, all fine, good stuff. And if you uh, didn't see it, um, check it out. The uh, Golden Idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's three or four shots of it sitting right there on the shelf. A couple in focus and a couple out of focus shots. Yeah. Clearly seen. Oh, it's a nice little homage to Raiders. Um, and then the movie really kicks in. I mean, I think you were saying that. Because uh, once they go to that planet where the unrefined um, certainly the is, high point for me is when they when they go to uh, Kessel, Spice Mines of Kessel. Right. Um, I'm not really sure why there's spaceship fuel there. Is, is that related to spice somehow, or I'm is it sure. just like there's spice and then there's also this thing down there that they mine? It was kind of weird and uncertain, but yeah. <laughs> But, but it was a good scene, though. It it's was, great. Or a it, series of scenes. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're trying to steal the fuel, uh, and uh, K3 is the droid, which is Hans, or, or Lando. So we didn't introduce L Lando. L3. L3. L3, right. I think. Uh, L3. Uh, oh, oh, right. So after, after they dealt yeah, with... Yeah, they need a fast ship. Right. After they dealt with Paul Bettany, there's the gambling scene with Lando, where Han Solo doesn't win, but he does realize that La Lando was cheating. And, mm -hmm. and, of course, that comes around at the end of the movie. But then um, Kira, played by Amelia Clark, knows Lando and recruits him in his ship. And I guess he just forgives the gambling debt that he owed him because he owed him a ship, right, that he didn't own. Um, uh, and then so Lando joins yeah. them, but he brings his uh, robot K3 with them. And K3 is great. Her introduction at the, uh, there's a little battle bot scene and she's, you know, telling the bots, don't fight. They, they're just using yeah. you for entertainment. K and K3 is all about droid rights, which has always been sort of like a, a nerd topic, you know, about Star Wars. Like, well, these sentient droids, you know, they're kind of treated like slaves. Basically, they are slaves. Right. And some of them just wear it a little bit, like, 3PO handles it because, you know, he, that's what he's made for. And, but this droid sort of is a lot more independent and, f you know, liberation-minded for the droid, for droid, uh, all droid kind. Yeah. So I like that. I like that character. Um, and it's, you know, kind of a parallel to the real world, right? You know, kind of equal rights. <laughs> Equal robot rights. Well, she has one of the. That robot has one of the funniest lines when. Uh, was it Han or, or Lando? Uh, Lando asks her, "Her is there anything you need?" When, yeah. he, when he's like getting up and he's leaving the cockpit or whatever. I think they were on the yeah, ship at the yeah, time. Yeah. He just says, "Is there anything you need?" And she just, without a beat, just turns and says, "Equal rights." <laughs> 
<laughs> like it's a great, perfectly timed line. Yeah, that was, I think that was my loudest laugh. And that's that's where greatest comedy <clears throat> comes from. And I mean, that's like, no. like, like those were some of the best Han Solo lines in the original movies too. He would just say stuff that was part of the moment, that fit the moment, and fit the character, and fit the too, character. You know. but, so, so they did they did a great job with that. But so they're at the spice mines, and this is where the movie really kicks in because uh, K three ends up freeing one of the robots by removing the um, uh, the restraining bolt, mm -hmm. and then the, the the robot like speaks to her, and and the I guess the question the the assumed question that the robot asks because I think it's beeps and twirls at her. It's like mm -hmm. what should I? Well, what do I do now that I'm free? And she responds after it beeps at her. I don't know. Go free some of your friends. Go free your brothers. <laughs> yeah, and then they do. The droids all revolution free each other, and then they they release the locks on all the slaves. And uh, yeah, that's a fun scene. And then like and that. and then Chewie sees some other Wookies being uh, sort of tortured, uh, and and he basically splits off from the plan with Han to go steal the fuel, steal the fuel, and you know sort of freeze freeze the Wookies and. This is a great action scene for yeah, the characters. Yeah, whole, the whole thing evolves into this massive breakout. It's not just the droids or the Wookiees. It's like everybody gets released. The droids start letting people go. And yep. it's no slaves left behind in this movie. Yeah, super fun scene. And that scene basically ends with Han Solo getting out with the fuel, Chewie and uh, some of the other Wookiees helping him. And then, of course, uh, K3 gets shot and damaged. Lando runs out to help her. Um, and he gets shot bringing her back and uh, Han and Chewie both go out and end up helping them onto the ship. Um, Kira, Amelia Clark's character, runs out and throws some grenades um, to, to help them get away. And uh, very just an overall very exciting, charming personality, like <clears throat> everything about that planet. Once we get there and we leave, just great. I mean, was there anything that, that you saw that you can remember that you didn't like about that? Um, I'd have to think about that. I, I think I think it was pretty solid. Um, <clears throat> other than it being just part of the overall kind of heist. Well, that's the story they're telling, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of mediocre plot where they're just trying to steal things. But well, here's so here's a specific question for you. What did you it's think? It's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. It's just fine. What? So what did you think about um, the scene with uh, Lando and the and K three dying on his lap? It was. Um, did it work for you? Yeah, yeah. Everything about L three. K L three maybe. I keep, keep saying, saying K three and it's L three. I, I believe. I think you're right. I think it is L three dash thirty seven. Right. I think the K I, I'm getting from uh, K2SO. K2SO, right? Yeah. yeah. So L. -3. No, that was that was great. It's emotional. This is the scene where uh, kind of like K2SO in Rogue One, where he died, and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. He died sacrificing himself. Wow. That yeah. was that was hard hitting and emotional. You know, very very few emotional hard emotional scenes. Right. In that movie, and that was one of them. And the same here. I mean, well not few scenes in this but you know it was it was he felt it yeah you know um good yeah i like that scene too because anything I, with k with the k2so now i'm saying it l3, l3. yeah <laughs> well, i kind of liked i kind of liked her personality and yeah crankiness and mm -hmm. you know what well, great droid character well, well written droids in star wars for the most part yeah um so then, then they they go to escape, and they're flying through the that cloud in space, and they come to the uh, gravity well, and the big gigantic octopus creature chasing them. They they launch the um, escape pod, which nobody ever knew that that's why there was that little space. Yeah, I think it's a fun. It was thing. something Lando said that he added it on. No, I know, I remember him saying that. So yeah. it's not like you. It's not like every one of those ships that they made looks like that and has that pod on it. I think it's maybe some accessory. It could be some accessory some you pay a little extra for, you know? Like if you pay extra for something in your car. <laughs> for an extra 500,000 credits, you get an escape pod. Yeah, but in case yeah, you need it. That was... Um, I thought it was a fun scene. Like, well, you're getting the... you're getting to see the evolution of the Falcon in, in this movie where it goes from being this pristine new 
kind of cool looking ship with the thing on the front and then he launches that and then the rest of the ship gets the roof pulled off like in a hurricane right all the pieces and coverings and stuff get pulled off by the gravity well so you're seeing how it becomes a piece of junk you know kind of look looks like a piece of junk anyway yeah so it's nice it's clever and well, and I, I just love the scope, too. So I, it was Empire, I believe, when they land on the asteroid uh, mm -hmm. and they they realize they're not on an asteroid. They get on and they flatten a big worm like they're in the worm's body in the mouth. <clears throat> I, I love that this, yeah. you know, we have the special effects now to do something crazy like they did. And it's just this massive kind of uh, octopus-like alien creature in space, you know. Probably, maybe nothing like that actually exists, but in Star well, Wars, it's fun. It's it's an interesting. I always thought the Kessel Run was like a race. I never really no no one ever said nobody knew what it what was. it was. Yeah. It's just that's the ship that made the Kessel Run and blah 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 parsecs. But they turned it into this just this kind of passageway that that you go through to get to Kessel. And you got it takes you twenty parsecs. That's it, unless you take a shortcut. Well, through hell. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Previous because parsec actually refers to a uh, 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 distance, distance, yeah. and not time. The way they reference it in the original Star Wars movies, it sounds like he's referring to it as "I did it in this amount of time." It, it seems like it's a time thing. Right. But I think that they cleverly in this movie. They said, yeah, there. You, you could see there were those flashing cylindrical things that were sort of creating some kind of a gravity well hole through the cloud. You could see them flying through it, and they were they were at different points of that tunnel that they yeah. were flying through. Uh, and that's probably 20 parsecs in length, that thing, or, or whatever, however long it takes, you know, to get out there. And But if you shortcut through it, then you can actually do it in less. I mean, less that, less distance. And so yeah. that they, they, that's how they justified taking the, t the reference of time and making it into distance. Um, so, yeah. So they get off Kessel. They go and do the Kessel run to escape. And then, land on the, the planet. then they're out. They land on the planet where they uh, are going to refine the fuel. And that's the great shot when they land in the, in the sort of the nose of the Falcon is buried in the sand. And you just see how messed up it is. Right? It's like sort of it's, it, the start uh, I have of it. I, I have to say something. Yeah. I'm getting a phone call now. It's interesting. Um, so the, when, they're, when they're going through the, uh, the maelstrom or whatever, right. and they've got, they've got TIE fighters after them, Han do, does this maneuver. I don't know if you remember or not, when where he lowers where he lowers the landing gear oh, right. and scrapes along the ground and I guess kicks up a bunch of debris. That was so dumb. Sorry. Oh yeah. I hated that both times. Because when when he that does that, would have destroyed the fucking landing it, gear. It's gonna like catch that. and flip it around. I mean, if you're doing it on asphalt, yeah, I don't think they had landing gear when they landed on the uh, really desert planet. They just kind of crash into the, oh, into the I, desert. Yeah, maybe it did mess it up. But, um, but, but yeah, with the landing I, I gear hate, down, it would catch that. and flip, and the ship would just become a rolling debris. Yeah, that, But, you know, another thing that kind of was stupid, but that, doesn't ruin the movie, certainly. Yeah. I kept, even just, the second viewing, I still didn't quite understand what is this thing I learned on the street back in the day. Yeah. He died we, doing it, though, when he yeah, crashed. Yeah, yeah. There's like, a whole buildup to it. Like, and, well, we didn't see that, so why reference it? And the whole doing it is just silly, scraping on the... I mean, I liked when he was flying along and the TIE fighter was trying to shoot, and then it got too close, and he does this move where he hit it. That yeah. was a fun visual. He knocked it into some asteroid or whatever yeah. that's floating but around. But, yeah, it's a scrape along the ground. You, you, okay, you're dead. End of movie. <laughs> Alternate yeah. Han Solo reality now we live in. <laughs> Where Star, Han Solo's not alive. Movie. Just or, accept it. Or maybe they cloned him and that's how he came later. Uh, but, yeah, so that was dumb. But so after they land on the planet... They get the fuel refined, but then the marauders show up, and then the, the main marauder ends up pulling her helmet off, and it's infestness. 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 Oh, nest. I, nest. Oh, nest. Like an infested nest of something. Uh, I like that character, and I wish that they had given us a little bit more when they first introduced it, that character at the train. 
give us a little taste of it somewhere along the way, like you did with Boba Fett in a few parts of the movie, right? Just you see it again, you see him setting up for this, seeing him setting up for tracking them. Like they did show them, like oh, they put some tracker on the ship, and you know we're gonna track them to wherever. Um, yeah, when they get the Falcon, they they have a tracker. So, but I like I like that it was female. It's fine. Um, I, I thought she had a really interesting look, and, and she had a good screen presence for the few lines that she had. And, it, and I felt when she revealed who they were and that they were fighting, you know, sort of a rebellion or the start of a rebellion, and that they were not just pirates and marauders, that they were actually stealing, kind of like Robin Hood, were stealing to, you, you know, try to... Few, to well, yeah, I think it's supposed to be the beginnings of the re The, the beginnings of the rebellion. Or something like that. But yeah, I, 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 was, I was not... I was expecting there to be something to the reveal, like that it was somebody in particular. I think they were but just surprised just, that it was a female. It's and a not girl. A male. Okay, that's fine. No, it's absolutely why, why fine. is why is that like a big reveal? You know, we do this big moment. Well, girl. because you expect it to be some big <laughs> hulking alien or or, or guy wow. or something. I um, expected it to be someone of I don't know significance, but it was just some person. Well, that was the problem with that character. That's why I wish that they, need they had to focused a little bit more on that Build it up character. a little bit. Have a, have a scene where there's somebody that that character is meeting with that hints at, when, when she reveals that she's stealing for the Rebellion, it would have been nice if we had had a 20 or 30 second scene earlier where she's just having a communication with an alien or some aliens, you know, going... You know, we see subtitles, you know, you know we're going to need this soon because the empire is you know or you know uh things are getting hairy in that zone or something you know some relation something that that makes that hints that they're going to be using the the money for good at some point and that there's some immediacy to getting this that so that's why they're so desperate to to steal from han solo this stuff but you know we don't really get a reference and it's just oh they're bandits they're stealing they're stealing and then oh no it's a girl and she's really helping the rebellion it, it was fine but I think they missed opportunity well, yeah, for it, making me go, wow, that character. could you have know? been, you know, like someone's child, like Woody Harrelson and Dandy Newton's yeah. child. You know, maybe he spoke about her when they were sitting around the campfire. And yeah. then she takes the helmet off and he sees, you. I thought you were dead or something. That's you know, good, yeah. It was just a it was just a big nothing for me, but yeah. it was fine. Well, yeah, they 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 could have done something really cuz the, the character, you know, really good action sequence. They came up with a really great costume for it. And to give a female that role, that's awesome. You may give, you know, like Boba Fett is iconic for Star Wars and this character could become iconic cuz it had such a great outfit. And it's a female, so you know, it gives uh, you know the little girls out there, you know, uh, another ro uh, uh, role model. But uh, yeah, they a missed opportunity. Sort of what they did with um, the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi. A missed opportunity for a really cool-looking, you know, costumed female character, uh, Phasma, and and sort of this one too. Sort of just a little bit missed opportunity. Phasma, mi a bigger a missed opportunity. Crime. This one, we could see this character more in, in, in sequels if they do them, because they have this movie set up for it. Mm. But, uh, um, and then, um, so, Paul Bettany lands on the planet. Uh, they're going to turn everything over. I mean, I mean the, the Marauders reveal, we already said they revealed that they were, you know, fighting for the Rebellion. And, of course, we know Han has a heart of gold, so he's probably going to help them. As a matter of fact... I think that one female character, the, the head of the Marauders, asks Amelia Clark's character, Kira, so what do you think he'll do? And then she says, I think he's going to help you, right? Like, because she knows him, right? Like, that's his heart. She knows that he's good at heart. So he's, that, she, that whatever he's discussing with Woody Harrelson over there by themselves, when, when she asks him that question, Amelia Clark says, I, yeah, I think he's going to help you. Um, and then, of course, that's what happens, right? So they go to the... Uh, Paul Bettany's uh, sail barge ship, which I thought looked kind of cool. Um, like a tower. Yeah, like a big tower. I love to see yeah. ships with wild, different designs like That's that. Star Wars. Rather than just like this flat land or some weird chrome, elongated, winged thing from the prequels, which we don't mention prequels here. <laughs> um, just <but> did. <laughs> um, 
And Paul Bettany's there. And so this is where the little bit of the heist, you know, uh, you know, the, the Scooby-Doo reveal, like, oh, you thought it was this, but now it's really this, right? Um, Paul Bettany reveals that, oh, Woody Harrelson, who just wandered off into the desert, he's going to go become um, Kane from Kung Fu and just wander off in the desert. Uh, I don't know what he was going to do. Um, his, his motives are a little weird and muddy. I don't Yeah. Uh, but so, so he just wandered off and, and uh, but he comes out, uh, apparently he's, he revealed to Paul Bettany that, that Han Solo is, is going to replace the fuel with uh, something that looks like the fuel and then try to, to, to double cross him. Um, and of course then, he, uh, so Paul Bettany sends all of his people to get the real fuel, which he thinks the real fuel, which is down there with the Marauders. So all his uh, henchmen go down there and turns out it's just a bunch of those old people who worked at the refinery were dressed up <laughs> in, in the Marauders' outfits. And then the real Marauders come out and overpower Paul Bettany's crew. And so now Han Solo reveals that, oh, you, uh, you, you, now you're outnumbered because you probably sent all your guys over there. And that's when um, Woody Harrelson realizes, oh, well... Since I can overpower the two guards in the room, I'm going to do that and steal off with the fuel? <laughs> I mean, then he... he I don't know why Han Solo brought the fuel there in the first place. Well, because he didn't have a... He couldn't really make up a replacement that looked like, you know, the fuel in the short amount of time that they had. But then... So my... This is my biggest problem with the movie. Even worse than the opening exposition and, and, and gangster on that city and some of the silly stuff that we already talked about. Woody Harrelson kills the two guards, picks up the fuel, and wanders off. Three questions. Three. Why didn't he just kill Paul Bettany too, so he doesn't have to worry about Paul Bettany c coming to get revenge? Mm -hmm. Duh. Number two is, where's he going? He's going out to the he, desert. He's maybe, wander off maybe the desert. Maybe he has some ship out there hidden away. We never know. Or we maybe, never learn about where he's going. If there's a refinery, there's probably a spaceport somewhere that he can go. But he's going to walk? He could probably hitch a ride or something. I don't know. It's dumb. It's not. But then the third question is. Either Han or Paul Bettany are going to survive that. Right. Which means they're going to come they're after him. They're both going to come after him. One or the other. That's why my number one was, why don't you kiss kill everybody in the room? Especially Paul Bettany. And then take the ship? And then take the ship! But the, the third thing is, when you get to the bottom of the elevator, aren't the marauders just going to be there waiting for you? The ones who are you know fighting for the rebellion? Because they overpowered all of uh, Paul Bettany's guys. So you think you're going to walk off and leave Paul Bettany alive... You have yeah. nowhere to go, and there's a gang of marauders outside waiting for you. <laughs> kill, kill Paul Bettany, and then team up with Han and Kira, and then have Kira do something. You know, I don't know. It's just it was such a dumb. Woody Harrelson's character was so stupid in that moment that it almost ruined the ending for me. <laughs> Anything to add to that? <laughs> yeah, he he. Throughout the whole movie, he's his. Like I said, his motives and his thinking is just really weird and it doesn't make a lot of sense. He tells Han, don't trust anybody, don't trust anybody. But he's trusting everybody. He trusts Han, he trusts Chewie, he trusts his crew. Andy Newton, the, the, the forearm alien. Andy Newton, and yeah, the, the guy, that, the, the monkey guy with the forearms. But we didn't really talk about it. I liked him. 